you've got like quite a lot to do in this show because like you're the conductor of the Drass Band and you're also head of Drass like in Guildhall School of Music and Drama in the junior department, let me say. Can you tell us a bit about your responsibilities in this area? Well, yeah, I mean, I started working for the Guildhall uh, about seven years ago and I got the, the head of brass job five years ago, so I've been running the band ever since then. You must have been a bit of a prodigy at that stage. Not really. I, I'm, I'm older than I look, you oh, know. <laughs> we would never have known. <laughs> no, we had, I, I entered the, the festival right from, the, right from day one almost, because it's a, it's a wonderful performing opportunity. Right. Uh, it's all very well sort of doing things at the end of term in front of the kid, in front of the parents, you know. But right. uh, it's great sort of playing in the Queen Elizabeth Hall and obviously in the Albert Hall. So it's wonderful performing Getting opportunity. In front of the said. public, right? Getting in front of the public. Yeah. And you run it. I mean, you got through in your first year of entering and now it's your fifth year in succession. I mean, this is an all-time record, I think. I, th I think it is, yeah. I believe that it's the most successful brass band, at least, isn't it, ever in the National Festival. Five years running is, I think, quite an achievement. That's amazing because, like, quite a few people don't know that much about brass band music and it's obviously getting it across to a huge audience of people who might not have heard it otherwise. Well, that's right, yeah. I mean, obviously, I've, over f now five years, I mean, the show we're going to be doing in a couple of months' time, I mean, you're... We've been performing to, what, getting on close to 30,000 people, I should think. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> doing, tremendous. doing better than my team, Aston Villa, isn't it? It's like <laughs> <laughs> heavy scene, but like, and apparently it's all the kids on brass in, uh, the, uh, in your class are actually in the band, right? Almost, yeah. Uh, there's uh, approximately 40 brass players at the Guildhall, right. of which I use uh, 25 of them. Um, and uh, obviously the other 15 are, are probably not quite up to the same standard, but will be, so they will join the brass band eventually. Um, but what, what you see at the Guildhall is, is, what, is, is what you see playing is actually at the Guildhall, so there's no wastage. That's <laughs> really good, so everyone's given something to do. Yes, there is. Yeah. On the other hand, it's not like you have this huge thousands of people type of pool of uh, talent to choose from. You're like, you've got really great talent there, but it's not as if there's all these people twilling their thumbs, will I get a chance? You bring them in very early, right? I'll bring them in as early as possible, yeah. Um, I mean, for instance, this term, we've got a couple of like grade four players, youngsters, 12-year-olds, that are coming in on, on the back row. I mean, the best place to train them is in a very good outfit. Right, I mean, I think it's experience is the main thing, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And you've got a friend here who's playing tenor horn, which is an instrument I've never, like, actually seen in a symphony orchestra, which is when I'm playing with big groups of people, that's what I'm doing most of the time. But, like, yeah. can you introduce us? Sure. Well, this is Ros Hall. My tenor horn player has been for five years. She's unfortunately leaving me, um, going off to Goldsmiths to greater things, but uh, she's been with the band for five years. I mean, what do you say about loyalty, Ros? I mean, isn't this a bit of a shame? Do you think you might come back just for one more performance? Or... Oh, I think I could do, yeah, if you'll have me back. <laughs> that would be great. I'm sure the man's going to persuade you. It would be cool. And, like, tell us about the tenor horn, because, like, that's a very unusual instrument. Where's, what's its background? It's a member of the saxon family, like euphoniums, baritones, tubers, things like that, but on a smaller scale, and it's really just used only in brass bands. Right, because like, I would have expected, you know, being called tenor horn, it might be a lower version of the French horn, but in fact it's not really related at all. No, not at all. And tell us what are your plans for the future then, like, uh, are you going to carry on doing this for the rest of your life, or like, do you have other plans, or...? Well, I'm going to Goldsmiths in a few weeks' time, and um, I'm going to concentrate more on French horn playing. Well, thanks, Ros. And, like, John, maybe you could... I know it's by a French composer, so I don't think I'm very um, capable of pronouncing this business. Can you tell us what the next uh, song is that we're going to hear? Yeah, um, I'm not very good at French either, but it is written by Debussy, and it, the English, English translation is The Girl with the Flaxen Hill, which is the piano solo uh, that I arranged for band and uh, solo uh, flugelhorn. Beautiful, and like, uh, I hear there was a little bit of happening with the flugel all near, like, tell us a little <laughs> bit of insight lovely. into what performing is all about, right? <laughs> oh, it was wonderful, yeah, after we finished the A-team, and of course there's marvellous shouts and screams from the audience and so on, yeah. um, the, the flugel horn player got up to play the solo, and uh, I was waiting there, and there's 5,000 kids, and the marvellous hush went over, over the place, and uh, I said, you ready? And she said, no, I'm not, look terrified at me. I said, well, what's the matter? She said, I've got me heels stuck in the staging. 